Hip-Hops is 1987.com. Terrell Thomas sitting down live downtown Atlanta, Georgia. I'm with a gentleman right now who's more like family and, and watching your journey and watching you do what you do in this music realm in the world as a young black entrepreneur has been very, very dope. Goes by the name of D. Hill, man. You got a lot of things going on. Originally a native of Los Angeles, but you're making things happen for yourself in the Atlanta area. Talk to me. Let our audience know about your upcoming in L.A. and what actually brings you here to the A. Um, like you said, I'm born and raised in Los Angeles. Um, what brings me to Atlanta? Music. Period. You know what I mean? Um, as you know, they might not know, packed up everything in my life and just took the trip to Atlanta. May 1st, 2017. I just said, fuck it. Remember we was in Texas. I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna just go to Atlanta. And we, I was, what, March. And then we did what I had to do in LA in April. And May, I'm here. Um, as far as growing up in South Central, I grew up in, um, I grew up in, I, I can't say I grew up in a normal household, but growing up in South Central, what the fuck is normal? You know what I'm saying? Being all the way honest. I grew up, I had both my parents, you know what I'm saying? They might not have always been in the house at the same time, but I'm a, aware of relationships with both parents. I grew up in a Crip neighborhood, grew up in the Crenshaw district on Slauson Ave. Crenshaw and Slauson Ave has become famous, known for, you know what I'm saying? Homie Nipsey Hustle. Um, shit was interesting, you know what I'm saying? I remember everything from having to get down because it's dry by outside to waking up on Christmas morning and there's bikes under the tree. You know what I mean? So it, it wasn't always, it wasn't always the best, but it wasn't always the worst. You know what I'm saying? Have I came home and the lights was off? Definitely. Have we had a mouse or a rat or whatever the fuck in the house? Definitely. You know what I'm saying? But then it's also been times where like shit in the 90s, my mom drove a Q45 Infinity. You know what I'm saying? My dad had a Jeep Wagoneer. Like, so niggas wasn't always down. It was just ups and downs. And I realized that now it's being old. My pops just hustled, you know what I'm saying? So now as I'm grown, I realize the ups and downs is the ups and downs is the hustle. And that's why some days it was cereal for dinner and other days we was just eating out every day. You know what I'm saying? So it was, de it was definitely interesting, definitely interesting. Now you're, 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 you're telling your story or you know, you're, you're letting your movie and your journey yeah. be seen or be heard via your music. You're doing things in the music realm as well. You just spoke on briefly you know, uh, where you're coming from. I've, I've been to your hood several times and it is. It's very diverse over there. One yeah. corner, you might see it, you say, a Bentley parked on the, on the corner or whatnot. Another corner, nigga, <laughs> <on the track. laughs> it's, 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 it's all type going on in that area right now. Talk to me about your music, your musical career, when you fell in love with music and how your, your upbringing influences that. When I fell in love with music was, what year did T.I.? No, let me take it before that. My first rap song that I knew all the words to was Snoop Dogg's Gin and Juice. Snoop Dogg's Gin and Juice. And I first rap song, that's my first favorite rapper ever was Snoop Dogg. And I was like, hell yeah. like. That, that nigga got it, you feel me? Like, that nigga cold, that nigga gangster, you know what I'm saying? Like, he, Snoop got it. Like, that's the epitome of a cool ass nigga. Like, what you, who's cooler than Uncle Snoop? <laughs> like, nobody, even he to this cool day, who cool? Life, yeah, yeah, who been cool? Like, like Snoop came out the room, like, yeah, past that. Like, it's cool ass nigga, man. And I just remember that Gin and Juice album, you know what I mean? That Gin and Juice record off that Doggy Style album. I grew up listening to gangster rap. My father would listen to more like oldies and stuff. My mom listened to gangster rap. Like, my, that's what it was. Now that I'm saying it, my mom loves Snoop. That's what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? She was the biggest Snoop fan. She knew all the words. Mom be crip walking and all that. You know what I'm saying? And it, it, that was just, that's just what it was. Living room, we at my grandma's house. We kids, come crip walk. Dude, I'll give you a dollar. You know what I'm saying? You put the Snoop on and you know, you're going to get that dollar. Like, just it is what it is. Um, growing up, moving forward. T.I. T.I. has been one of my favorite rappers, man. You know what I'm saying? Every album that T.I. put out, in my opinion, you know what I'm saying? He's progressively, you can see his, his status goes higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. Go from Urban Legend to I'm a King, my two favorite albums by T.I. Urban Legend is like, yeah, I'm still in the dope spot. I'm getting it. I'm a King or King. You know, I never even really knew which the title was, but whatever. It was like, now I'm trapping out this Buckhead loft. You know what I'm saying? You still got to get it. 
but you're a little more sophisticated with it. You. you know what I'm saying? Now you got the suits on, you know what I'm saying? That's around the time tips start talking like at the source, you feel me? And it just continued to grow and develop to where you have them now. Like, man, shit, that nigga's bust up. You can't be mad at it. You can't be mad at it. I see you right now, you know what I'm saying? And, and as long as I've known you, good brother, we, we, we definitely know a few colors that identify you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's that blue, you know, you, you, you rep the blue very, very, very hard. So talk to me about, as you mentioned, growing up in a Crip neighborhood and how that's motivated you to be the person you are today. Growing up in a Crip neighborhood was interesting, you know what I'm saying? Um, I got introduced to gangs. When was When did I first know, like, trying to... My cousin got killed, and I knew, like, that had to be some gangbanging shit because I knew he was a gangbanger, you know what I'm saying? I knew he was gangbanging, and I heard the story that my mother told and the family told, but I'm growing up in the late shit, shit that shit don't make sense. no sense. That shit don't make no fucking sense. That nigga was gangbanging, you know what I'm saying? And I have other cousins that I have this one cousin specifically, I ain't going to say his name, but nigga, you know yo ass nigga. He, I did my first bad everything was with this nigga. First time I smoked the blunt. First time I seen a gun. First time I got into a fight on some gang banging shit. Started when it was all with this same one cousin because he was already active. Eighth grade, he was catching uh, gun cases in junior high school. You know what I'm saying? Going to, we got YA, you know what I'm saying? LP, you know, juvenile halls and all that kind of stuff. He was, nigga, been doing that type of shit. You know what I'm saying? Beat murder cases, been shot up, all kind of shit. And I'm kicking it with this nigga every single day. And how I ended up being with him, um, I went to school, Palms Junior High School, it's in West L.A., by Santa Monica and all that, you know what I'm saying? So I went to school there, um, kept getting into it, kept getting into fights. My mom was like, oh, you bad, you want to go to school with the bad kids and dad, I'm going to put you in school in the neighborhood, you can go to school with your cousin. Just made friends, hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, and I just kept going from there. Um, high school, I remember I got into a fight on the football field. I went to Hamilton High School, you know what I'm saying? I got into a fight on the football field with one of the enemies. He was on the, I was a receiver. And he had said something on the line, and I took off my helmet, smacked him right upside his head. And I'm on a football field fighting, you know what I'm saying? Go to school on Monday, his homies go to school. So we get into, I get into it with his homies. I end up hitting one of his, I'm a ninth grader, his homie is senior. I'm, we both on the football team. I play uh, varsity, I'm starting as a receiver. He a linebacker. I'm in the ninth grade, bro. I'm 13, 14 years old, nigga. You 18, you know what I'm saying? You grown, bro. Like, you compared to me, I hit this nigga with a trash can. Like, it ain't no way you finna be putting your hands on me. Like, that's out. Like, I'm not going for none of that. And you clearly got a size difference on me. Smack that nigga with a trash can. And I ended up getting, he gave him a concussion. L LA schools got LA uniform PD on campus. So I ended up getting locked up. Literally, like, the niggas put me in handcuffs and everything. And it's a jail. I didn't even know that they got jail cells in schools in LA. And I'm like, what the fuck? It's a whole jail. Like, nigga, you get your ass locked up at school, get booked and everything. Like, so I got booked. They end up, like, giving me, like, some community service, some little shit, because my mom came, and he's a good kid. You know all the shit a black mama going to do for you. You know what I'm saying? She came and did all that, and I ended up getting community service. My mom was like, okay, we're well, going to put you in the suburbs. You know what I'm saying? I went to school in Cerritos. And, you know, now I'm meeting dudes from Long Beach, Compton, Watts. You know what I mean? Like, I'm from the west side of L.A. You know what I'm saying? We don't meet. Because you've been there, you know, Long Beach ain't close. You know what I mean? It's not far, but. You know, that I'm, shit is it's a mission. Yeah, I don't got no. If I don't know you, why am I over here? So now I'm meeting dudes from Long Beach and Watts and, you know what I'm saying, different parts like that. And I'm meeting different gangbangers and, you know what I'm saying, some niggas I'm cool with, some niggas I'm not. You know what I'm saying? But it's all just on some, just some, some hood shit. You know, like, just on some hood shit. Now I'm going up and I'm going to jail. You know what I'm saying? I go to jail, I get stabbed in the face. No, I'm lying. I get stabbed in the face and I get stabbed in the face when I was 18, and then I get stabbed in the face again when I was like 19, 20, all on some game banging shit. Um, I go to Riverside on a run. It's a whole little other situation. I'm on a run, trying to get away from the PO or whatever. I end up getting shot in the leg or some fighting in Riverside. I can't even really even tell you why. Like I can't even honestly even tell you why. Just young and just wild, bro. Like just really wild. Like I'm not looking for an issue, but I'm taking everything too far. You know what I'm saying? Am I the homie you call? When it's time to go drop shit, you niggas ain't calling me. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not, I got kids and all that. I'm not the nigga that's going to go kill a nigga and all that just because I'm not going to do all that. I'm about to get some paper. Now, if you trying to go get some bread, for show, for show. Back in the day, if you want to hit a lick, for show, for show. You know what I'm saying? If it's some money involved, I'm with all that. But just let's go ride on these niggas and da 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 da. It's not my lane. It's not, it's not like, you know what I'm saying? Calling it what it is. And, and everybody thinks that just because you're a gang member, you out here down and shit every day, like, nah, my nigga, you know what I'm saying? I'm not walking around with no blur on me every single day. I got kids. How I look like I'm in, I'm in the fucking Disney store with a photo on me. 
I look weird as fuck. You look like, nigga, what the fuck is this nigga? We see some of that shit, though. We see some of it. But you look dumb as fuck. (laughs) Like, you look dumb as fuck. But as I learn, I grow, and I develop, I'm learning that you got to get away from that type of shit. You know what I'm saying? You really do. And I'm one of the, like, I got homies. Man, I got one of my best friends right now is fighting life. Like, man, free my nigga BSK. You know what I'm saying? My nigga's fighting that life right now. They not trying to send my nigga home. You know what I'm saying? They trying to get my nigga, like, all day. He got a newborn baby, all type of shit. You know what I'm saying? They trying to throw my nigga away on some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Like, they giving niggas numbers for, for nothing. My nigga ain't did nothing. My nigga ain't did nothing. You know what I'm saying? And it might sound like, oh, that's just his homie saying it. Like, nah, he really didn't do shit. But what you going to do? You know what I'm saying? Like, like damn, my nigga, he game banger. He got the tats and all that. Like, ah, look bad. But, like, fuck, nigga didn't do shit. You know what I'm saying? So, you no, know, that type of shit is happening, man. Just being in L.A. You know, I was just in L.A. last week. Man, before I even get off the plane, my nigga, true story. Call my brother. I say, um, hey, I'm finna get off the plane. I'm finna come to grandma house. Man, do not come here, my nigga. Why? Man, the police here. What? They're looking for you. For real? Hell yeah, niggas crash. That's a gang task force. For real? He was like, man, hell yeah. Somebody had to tell them niggas that you was coming. All right, fuck me. So now I'm detouring. You know what I'm saying? Fuck it. I'm like, go to the beach, go smoke with homies, whatever, blah, blah. Still got to go pick up my kids and come back to this house where you niggas is waiting on me. You know what I'm saying? So now I got to maneuver that around my baby mama. You know what I'm saying? All that type of shit. Get the kids. Me and the kids just go to a hotel. Like, fuck it. We're not even going. Fuck with this shit. A couple days go by. Go to the house, see my moms and all that. Uh, the second day I'm in the city. I'm only there for 10 days. Second day I'm in the city. The homies call me. Hey, bro, be careful. Tiny, man. Three of the enemies just got shipped. And they don't even know who did it. They just went and downed a nigga from, you know what I'm saying, one of the other hoods just off GP. All right, fuck. Days. Next day, the homie gets shot at. Day four, five, and six go past. Day seven, my little brother is going off to uh, Missouri Valley to play football. He got a full scholarship. You know what I'm saying? Last day, he don't game bang. He don't do nothing. Like, that nigga play football, and that's it. He the one that never went to jail. No extras, no nothing. You know what I'm saying? I don't think this nigga ever been put in handcuffs. He got a full scholarship to go play football. We go on and get some trees, put him on a flight, and go big brother shit. You know what I'm saying? Crash pull us over. Y'all gang bangers, what y'all doing over here? Y'all got gang tattoos. Got me and my nigga on the corner just sitting. My nigga got six hours before he catch a flight and go play college football. He's sitting on the curb. Him done. Why? Just because that's because because the same three niggas that I know just got chipped. Y'all know just got chipped. Same homie that just got chipped around the corner, y'all know about that nigga too. And the niggas who just got bust down over here, plus whatever going on on the enemy side that I don't know about. So, three niggas in his in his black truck with tinted windows. Fuck y'all niggas oh, yeah, on. They wanna know what's up. With y'all niggas on. It's me, my brother, and my cousin. You know what I'm saying? Like niggas, literally family. You feel me? We gonna search you, all that type of shit. They run my name. Wait, why y'all with this nigga? Ooh. So now it's a whole different set of questions. Like, look at the IDs. We all three got the same last name. We cousins. Like, this is what it is. Look at the address on the ID. That's around. That's literally around the block. I live on 4th Avenue and 60th. That's on 5th Avenue and 60th. We on the corner. We belong right here, my nigga. It's nothing about this doesn't make sense. We live right here. You feel me? So that shit happened. Um, day 8, 9 go by. Day 10, as I'm going to the, I'm day night, the night of day 10, I'm sorry, the night of day 9, I go to a party to, with the homegirls. We leave. Homeboy called me, bro. It's glad you left when you left, man. Niggas just got this shit shot up. And that's that's the South that's a South Central week. That's that's life in LA. That's a South Central week. Like that's just a week. Like, fuck, nigga, I'm ready. I'm just sitting there like, man, I'm ready to go back to LA. Hey, like, shit, nigga, I'm tired. Like, I'm tired, <laughs> my nigga. Like, I'm fucking tired, man. I got my kids with me during all this shit. Like, you just trying to make it. Like, you really just trying to make it. And people don't understand that, like, niggas is really just trying to make it. You know what I'm saying? Nine times out of ten. Yeah, you got that knucklehead, but for the most part, ain't nobody really bothering niggas from the other side. You ain't going over there really looking for no issue unless it's something you really got a problem with. And then that's even a select few. If you got 10 gangbangers in the room, eight of them really ain't no killers. You know what I'm saying? Not saying that if pushed to it, they won't drop you. You know what I'm saying? Put me, put my back against the wall, and if it's going to be me or you, it's not going to be me. But on the back end, I'm not walking around chipping niggas. I'm not. Like, I don't even want that kind of karma. I don't even want that kind of energy. You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm, are you taking any of this? Fuck no. Do I got some shit on me so you can't take it if needed? Definitely. Definitely. But I ain't bothering you, my nigga. So don't come fucking with me. 
So what you working on out here in your music realm right now, man? I know you got a lot going on as far as your music is concerned. You're working with a bunch of different people, looking to get your story and your message out. What exactly are you working on right now? Uh, right now I got the single out, Blue Bandana. Go ahead and check that out on all major streaming platforms, D Hill, Blue Bandana. Um, just, I'm not even really focusing on an album, you know what I'm saying? I think it's more important that the world get introduced to me, you know what I'm saying, know who I am, what I'm about, and everything that I can't get away the formula, I won't say it too much. Singles, not an album. I just say that though. I definitely just say that, you know what I'm saying? But I got a code for me. I'll talk to you about that off the camera, you know what I'm saying? Can't give it to these niggas because they fuck around, take my shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you gotta just find the homie. Um, you gotta just find something that works for you in your lane, in your niche, somebody that you're comfortable working with, you know what I'm saying? As far as like engineers and stuff, your engineer makes a big difference, you know I what I'm saying? That. So shout out my nigga Life, my nigga Sauce. I got this young engineer, my nigga Jordan, he hard, you know what I'm saying? I do, uh, he do a lot of work with me. But you gotta find somebody who's comfortable with you, somebody you're comfortable with, somebody who knows your sound, somebody who you're not afraid to be like, nah, that don't sound good, do it like this, you know what I'm saying? And then somebody who's comfortable to tell you like, hey, don't do that. That shit sucks. You know what I'm saying? Because niggas be like, yo, that sounds good. I'll be like, no, it don't. And I said it. Like, that shit, that's not it. But no, nah, bro, you good. You good. And a lot of times the engineers are lazy, so they're trying to rush you through the session. They're ready to get to the next person because to them, you just a, another number on the calendar. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, no, nah, my nigga. Like, yeah, engineers is funny acting. Like, engineers, not all engineers, but sometimes them niggas is funny acting. You feel me? So you got to know little tricks. Like, you can't let a nigga rush you through your song. If I want to spend five hours on this song, I'm going to spend five hours on this song. And you're going to sit there and get your ass paid by the hour while I make this song. And you're going to do my shit the way you're supposed to because I'm paying you by the hour for it. You know what I'm saying? But they will get bored with a song. And I understand it becomes monotonous to listen to the same song over and over, the same little section over and over and over. If you've been in the studio, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? So what, nigga? That's your job. This so what? You chose so what, nigga? <laughs> right. Like, so what, nigga? I don't feel nothing for you. If you don't like it, it's always a Burger King to hire. Period. You know so you, uh, Blue Bandana is out right now, as you mentioned, it's all on all streaming services. You don't want to drop an album, as you mentioned. You want cash to get familiar. So is it going to be, are we going to see a series of singles? Yeah. And then do you see an album coming in the future? Is definitely. It just, okay. definitely. No, it's definitely an album coming in the future, okay. but that's long term. You know what I'm saying? I put myself on this. I literally got a chalkboard, and it's in the shape of California. You know what I'm saying? And I write down my 90-day goals. I got... Uh, 180 day goes. I got you feel me, and I'm knocking shit off, knocking shit off, knocking shit off. So an album is definitely coming. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But what's the point of putting out an album when the when the public don't know who you are? And then it's gonna just sit there. You know what I'm saying? Like in that cash fall for that every day. Man, and, and that. niggas gotta be humble. Be real with yourself, my nigga. Like you gotta be real with yourself. I'm not at this exact point. You know what I'm saying? I'm not in everybody's mouth. I'm not dinner time conversation. So why not become dinner time conversation and then make it make sense for an album? You know what I'm saying? If it don't if it don't make sense, why do it? You gonna have this motherfucking shit sitting on Apple Music and all that for three, four years before anybody even <laughs> give a fuck to listen to it? You and your homies listen to it? Like, nah, my nigga. Nah, nah. Put that shit into a single and go. You know what I'm saying? Do what makes sense. But you got to be humble and understand where you are in your career. You got to really understand where you are in your rap career. You know what I'm saying? Niggas be lying to themselves. Niggas be real life lying to themselves. Like, you starting to believe that bullshit you put in the song, huh? You really think that shit is real? No, nah, my nigga, you got to keep that shit 100. You know what I'm saying? If you started from the ground up, that's cool. Start from the ground up. Find some niggas that's on that ground up shit and get with them. And y'all all build together. Period. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I see industry niggas all the time, you know what I'm saying? I seen a rapper last night at the gas station, you know what I'm saying? And i tell you more off camera. You know I'm going to keep it real with you off camera. But I say it like this. I seen you at the gas station, you know what I'm saying? And, like, I, I get you got your homies around or whatever, you know what I'm saying? But I had to, like, low-key tell this nigga, like, bro, you know who I am, my nigga. You feel me? Also, you, you know what this shit is, my nigga. And for those who know, niggas get exactly what I'm saying. But, you know what I'm saying? If you don't, it just ain't for you. But... You gotta like low key remind niggas like, hey bro, don't, everybody ain't. Come on, my nigga. You feel me? But then on the back end, I keep niggas around me who gonna tell me like, hey chief, quick, like nigga, who the fuck you think you are? Da -da -da, nigga, no, nigga. Da -da -da. You gotta keep that humbleness. You gotta keep that shit real with yourself. And if you can't keep it real with yourself, keep some niggas around you that's gonna keep it real with you. Period. Because sometimes you look in the mirror and we see a cloudy vision, and a homie gotta be like, let me wipe that off for you real quick, player. <laughs> and you get that right. You feel me? And that's just what it is.
So what's next, dog? Like, what's next? You 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 have a clear perspective of what's going on in the rap game. You're no fool, no idiot by any stretch of the imagination. You know what's going on going on out here in these streets. You know what's going on out here in music. And the approach you're taking already, I think, is dope by saying that, hey, I'm not going to come out with an album. I'm going to let catch it. As, as using your words, you know, I'm going to become a dinner time conversation. I respect that, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Before you actually do some, some big shit and drop a big, big problem, pr- 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 uh, project, excuse me. So what's next for D-Hill? I know, you, as, as we mentioned, you're doing a lot with a lot of producers out here in Atlanta. You're doing a lot as well on the West Coast as well. And we're going to continue to document. We're going to sit down with you again on this journey and, and see, like, your progress, to see what's next. You know what I'm saying? Jump, jump in the studio with you. But what's next for you, dog? Um, I got a single that I just dropped today, as a matter of fact, 6 a.m., featuring my boy 1247 Swift. Don't even let me start lying about what label Swift is signed to, you know what I'm saying? But shout out to my nigga Swift, because I know you did just sign on that dotted line, you know what okay. I'm saying? Um, that's produced by Sauce Lord Rich, you okay. feel me? Okay. Who's behind hits such as Watch Out Little Bitch, you know what I'm saying? Iggy Azalea, a couple little hits, but we're going to let the homie speak on the rest of his accolades, you feel me? Um, but that's out now, single and visuals, that's Apple Music, look. Spotify, Tidal. If you, could, if you could find Jay-Z on it, you could find me on it. Go ahead and just look for it, you feel me? And then the YouTube link, The Real D Hill 10. Go ahead and follow, not the, T-H-E, the, spelled correctly. Real D-H-I-L-L, the number 10 on Instagram. Follow me, click the link in the bio. Go to the YouTube and all that dope ass rap nigga shit, you feel me? Um, what else do I have? Honestly, I try not to get too, too caught up in the industry shit, you know what I'm saying? Cause I try to get, I treat everything like I'm still broke, you feel me? I treat everything like I still don't got no money. So I got, um, I'm reintroducing my t-shirt line that I had going a couple years ago. And just, I wore one of the shirts the other day and they was just like, yo, where can I buy this? I had no lie, 15 niggas mm-hmm. in my inbox, like, yo, where can I get this? And I'm like, oh shit, I ain't no shit. Give me a second, I got you, you feel me? Give me a second, I got you. But I ain't gonna take your bread if I know I ain't got the product, you feel me? I ain't even gonna front, try to flex, like, nah, my nigga, I don't got it for you right now. Give me a second, give me a week or two, and I'll have it for you, you feel me? But I'm gonna start doing the merchandise, um, getting a lot into investments. I'm looking into a lot into investments. Like I said, I got kids. I don't know, this rap shit funny, you know what I'm saying? This rap shit funny, you know what I'm saying? No, yeah, you know what I mean? And as I'm learning, how everything goes and I'm watching how everything goes, you got to really have a safety net coming into it because if they don't fuck with you, they don't fuck with you. This shit is real clicky. You know what I'm saying? You ain't like sitting with the cool kids in the lunchroom. You fucked, my nigga. You really are. You know what I'm saying? So I'm blessed the fact that I have positive relationships with the cool kids. You know what I'm saying? And I appreciate them for bringing me into the circles and I show like, I get a lot of love in the city. You know what I'm saying? But I still know enough to know that before I fly on y'all wings, I got to have a safety net for if and when those wings get cut off. You know what I'm saying? And even if they never do get cut off, you can't just ride a nigga coat to. You can't. You know what I'm saying? You got to have something to come to the table. If you can't be used, your ass is useless. Yeah, and we all got something. We all have families out here. You feel me? So you can't just have a nigga that just want to be around. Nah, my nigga. You got to be good that. for something. You feel me? So I figured out what I'm good at. And music is it. You feel me? Rapping and songwriting. Well, we rocking with you, dog. You already know that. We rocking with you on this journey. We're going to keep bringing you more from D Hill. We might just start coming behind the scenes and seeing what you got jumping out here. Because just this this cat, you think he's hilarious on camera. He's even funnier off camera. It gets, I'm trying to it, behave. It, yeah, I dig it. I, I see. I see you trying to behave. Terrell Thomas, we live right now downtown Atlanta. Shout out, as always, my man Danny Digital behind the scenes doing his thing. Once again, with my man D Hill. Let them know one more time where they can follow you via social media. You can follow me on Instagram. T-H-E-R-E-A-L-D-H-I-L-L, the number 10. Just follow me on that. I don't even, I got to get on my social media shit. Yeah, you I ain't do, even dog. You got to start documenting Pure Life Comedy. This man, he doing it all. He doing it all out here. Stay tuned. We bringing you a lot more from this brother. Hip-hop!